What is product management? Essentially, it's just a, a term that says supply chain and distribution channel. This goes into anything that any person wants to create and sell on the market. And what does this really mean? Let's talk about a product that a lot of us use on an almost daily basis. Well, maybe not daily, but let's talk about beer. So we like enjoying a beer at the end of the day and sitting on a terrace, summertime is coming up in Montreal. But what really goes behind a beer? And when somebody puts a beer in front of you, what's all the product management that goes into it? Now, whenever you create a product, you also have to think about the supply chain. And this is really just saying all the raw materials that go into creating your product. For example, if you're using a cell phone, you have to think about the person mining for the metal components, the person who's developing the technology, the hardware, the factory worker who puts it all together, the one who puts it in a box, the marketing person, and so on. In beer, the example we're using, it's all about raw ingredients. So you need your malt, you need your yeast, you need your uh, wheat, and you need your different ingredients for flavoring and whatnot. And this all, this all sounds relatively easy. You just mix it all together in a batch, but there's everything that goes behind it. So you have to actually consider in your pricing, in your, pro uh, in your product, in your day-to-day -day operations, all the factors that go into the development of your product. For beer, you need to order a lot of malt and barley. And although it seems like you just pick up the phone and order some more malt or barley, this can fluctuate based on good crops, whether what the price of malt and barley is on the world market, commodity prices, and this all changes things. So you have to monitor that pretty carefully. And you also have to ensure that whenever you need more malt or barley, you can just pick up the phone and there's trusted suppliers who will make sure it comes to you. If you can't ensure that steady flow of ingredients, you can't make your product. And that means your operations come to a standstill. So you always have to think about all the factors that go into making it. Even if you're doing something as simple as reselling someone else's product. I know someone who has a US who sells, uh, I know someone who sells promotional merchandise. And not a lot of people know this, but when there was the Fukushima reactor disaster in Japan, the price of USB keys went up on average two to three dollars a unit. And this was because the majority of the components that go into USB keys are made right near the facility in Japan and operations came to a standstill. People couldn't get new components to make their USB keys and the price went up and the entire market and all the suppliers and all the promotional people who wanted to distribute and because the demand kept going had to find a way to adapt. And you have to think about these things whenever you're planning on building a product, no matter what it is. Now, once you have your product and it's all put together and you've got a, uh, you've got a beer in a bottle, packaged, labeled, ready to go, you now have to think about getting it to people. Actually, on the way over here, I saw one of the greatest examples of this is that a Budweiser delivery truck who was in front of Cafe Campus and they had to deliver their beer, uh, their beer. but if anyone ever has ever been to Cafe Campus, they know this, there's four or five flights of stairs before you get up to the top bar. So instead of, instead of having their delivery guy climb those stairs with their entire beer order, they actually have a, a truck, a semi, with a crane on it that lifts a giant cargo container up to the top window and delivers it in. These are the types of problems you have to solve. If you're going to be delivering a product, you have to think about how to transport it. Does it need to go across state lines? Is it just down the street? What size truck do you need? What, how many delivery staff do you need? And essentially all the questions that go behind, behind how are you getting that product to the point of sale or directly to the consumer? You got to ask yourself and you have to plan that in and put it into your cost structure, uh, into your operations management. Logistics are just as important in uh, product management and product development as a lot of other things because if you have a great product that everybody likes and that everybody wants, it's completely meaningless if it's sitting there in your warehouse not going anywhere. So when you're talking about putting together a company and you have a product to deliver, whether it's real or virtual, Think about everything that needs to go into it. All the problems that can come up in delivering your product. Recently, uh, we saw that a bunch of websites got hacked. And so this is something you even think about when you're creating websites. What are the potential problems that can come in? What are the, who can hack a server and how will this affect my clients in the future? It, it's all part of managing your, your product, but also managing your clients and ensuring that you can continue a steady stream of uh, making sure that you can continue a steady flow of your product to the public so that you can keep making revenue. 
remember, you can't, you have to always continue to make money. And so even if you're having problems on the supplier end, the end consumer doesn't care about that. They want your product now or they're going to go to somebody else. So whenever, so when you're doing your product, make sure you have a supplier, make sure you have a backup supplier, make sure you have a distribution channel and a backup to your distribution channel because it's all about getting your product to the consumer. Thank <music> you.